when you get into the writings of the elite, you know they they don't go for the uh, creator of the universe creating everything. They more believe in the aliens made us, and then somehow the aliens were just created randomly out there in the universe. You know, even though they're basing most of that on Sumerian texts, uh, cuneiform texts. And even the Anunnaki in it, whether you believe it's a mythological story or not, they believed in an all creator. New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half of the collagen it did in their youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up 70 to 80 percent of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen, which will improve your skin's elasticity, make it smoother, more plump, and more youthful looking. That's why Ageless Multi-Collagen provides five key types of collagen you need from four different sources essential to optimally support an array of full body benefits. No odor, no taste, no clumping, unlike other collagen supplements. And this is why I recommend Health with Adapt 2030. Ageless Multi-Collagen, and look at that, I need another bag already. Quick way for youthful appearance, use the link in the description box below for 51% off my favorite Ageless Multi-Collagen. And now on, with the video. But Ransom, I know you're so much into, you know, the chimera and the illusion with the DNA splicing and gene manipulation that's going on today that they would try to, and I'm saying they as in uh, Council for Relations, central bankers, whatever it might be, government institutions to try to pretend that an alien would drop down onto the earth and you said you don't agree or, you know, you, you don't believe most stuff. Because imagine if you were able to gene splice and create not Dolly the sheep, but entirely new species by combining DNA. You could make it look like it was an alien and our recollection, how they program us in the media of what aliens look like. Could you not create that same exact thing? Obviously, you could. So, Ransom, I'll let you start off because I know there were a few ideas there before we're going on break that I, that I know you could respond to in like a fifth of an eighth of a second. Yeah. Well, let's start off with, uh, you know, this concept of the mark of the beast there. You know, me personally, I never really thought it was going to be a chip or a number or anything like that. I always thought that uh, it was a pretty straightforward uh, parable about what you think and what you do. You know, if you have the mark of the beast on your forehead, you're probably a person thinking e evil thoughts. And if you have a mark of a beast on your hand, well, your hand is what you do. Uh, you know, if you're doing evil, you indeed have the mark of a beast, whether you believe it or not. You're acting like a beast. But let's uh, take it technological, as we were talking before. Uh, we have all kinds of people, and this goes right into the chimera thing, actually, uh, in, in my opinion. We're, we're taking lots of, quote unquote, medications uh, with lots of different DNA and cell lines. We're uh, adding different compounds that are not supposed to be probably in your body or we would have never came in contact with them normally. But now it might as well be. It doesn't matter if it's just your evil thoughts or a chip or a number or something like that, because it would intersect in this way. The B system, if you want to call it that, is kind of the new world order or the world uh, governance of everything, a communist uh, kind of Luciferian system. And. You know, if you were going to interact with anything in their economy, you would kind of be by choice picking some evil things because some of the corporations that you choose to do business with or whatnot, uh, a lot of people unknowingly would be intertangled in these uh, wars. And, you know, you can get into the central banks and everything. So if you're tied by a social credit score or some kind of chip or even a medication you got in your arm where you're being monitored you know, you would indeed be taking part of kind of a beast system, whether or not it's a, you know, a religious thought or not, it's still kind of the same idea. And this gets into the chimera thing. Um, we don't have to ask if we could create animals. Um, they're doing it right now in tech labs all across the United States and every other uh, technological country like China, France, England, etc. There are companies that are mixing human DNA with animals on large scales. And there 
it's a state secret uh, to try to find out what's going on with some of these programs. There's no telling what they're making. They kind of give us these little anecdotal versions of it, like spider goats and uh, pigs growing human organs. But they're doing much more than that. They're combining um, embryos of different animals and seeing how long they can go. And they're also passing laws to allow them to continue to test longer. So do I think if a UFO showed up on the doorstep, not that I disbelieve that there may be extraterrestrial life, However, I would have to question it, knowing that the technology is available and ready right now for them to make a creature that's, you know, 80, 70 percent human and 20 or more percent of something else. So what if they crossed it with an amphibian, a salamander, a frog? I mean, you can go on and on and there would be a infinite number of alien looking creatures mixing and combining DNA. And then you go back into the ancient past, whether it's uh, the ancient Aryan Indus Valley Uh, They have depictions of chimeras all the way into the Greek times and the Roman times. You know, they were still kind of depicting it. So, indeed, maybe at one time they had the technological level, because really a lot of the Genesis stories uh, and Sumerian tales are one and the same. And they talk about the same things and they do talk about it in a technological sense, whether or not they're talking about building a giant boat that can withstand a, a massive flood or you're talking about chimeras being mixed. Uh, Even the story of mankind sounds technological if you want to get into that, but somewhere along the lines, someone has already attempted to kind of stray away from the normal human spiritual evolution of of its body and mind. And indeed, we live in those same times now. So actually, if you're a person that's been taking medications, I'm going to keep saying medications because you know that that other word is a trigger word, RNA and DNA into your body, making you a chimera. Now, when you add the ideas of nanotech and other things like that, you are not only an, a chimera, but a cyborg. And it's the limitless imagination of what these things can turn out to do. Um, but it's hard to ignore or kind of be naive and not say that they're not altering the course of human evolution with these technologies. And just indeed, the mark of the beast isn't necessarily uh, a technological connection that you're bound to, but indeed, actually, it is what you're thinking and choosing with your thoughts and then what you're physically doing with your body. So, for instance, you might be able to, through the use of fear and misinterpretation, may want not to preserve your liberty of conscience and, and go into that particular Sunday Law agenda, which you will be see rolling out. And then you might think, well, you know, I can just go along with that, but then maybe deep inside of my conscience, I'm just going to do it to to stay with the program, but then secretly down deep inside, I'm really not a part of the program. That's where it actually enters into your thoughts, and it would be you're physically doing that thing, even going against your own conscience, based out of fear and not love that. A way will be made. You can be self-sustainable. God will provide in, in those times and has given us this great instruction on how to go forward as I continue to learn and, and, and learn from each other. That's what I've come to, to understand myself. The beast mentality is essentially fear over faith. Perfect love casts out fear. If that fear-based continuation will lead you to do some pretty interesting things. Now, it's good to have a sense of I guess, discernment and and apply that, but you could see where that train of thought leads and then that would cause people to try to uh, do some pretty interesting things that they might not normally do. And Hey, I think we've all done some, made some mistakes based on on, on high levels of, of not really thinking correctly. That's you're talking about how that really functions, which is in that freedom. And then we start tinkering within that's definitely a scary road to go down. Does it end well? And I think that you're taking something that is natural and trying to make it not natural, the best way I could put it. And I don't think that there has ever been a good ending when that has happened with all the interesting experimentation. So really, when when you can just go within the laws of nature, there's the answer. For instance, the bumblebee. The bumblebee, through its creation and its natural nature, by physics, shouldn't be able to fly. The bumblebee doesn't know that, so it just flies. It didn't need to be modified. 
and some of this weird stuff even happens in nature. Uh, I was showing the audience just right when you were talking about a bumblebee, about this single bee uh, in Africa that's making an immortal clone army of itself. So it's like replacing. And I keep coming across these these uh, analogies kind of between humans and bugs. So I read this article, just skimmed through it real fast, and it's kind of talking about a similar thing to a story I talked about the communist ant uh, before uh, on your show, David. Uh, this one's kind of like that. It, it makes its own clones. They are all, all identical, and they behave all the same way. They don't work, so they collapse the colonies by replacing the regular honeybees that work that are doing their kind of natural thing, and then they move on to a new a new hive and replace that one. Um, it, it's kind of bizarre because it's kind of like this communist mentality of groupthink, and then at the same time the analogy about you know how. Certain people with philosophies don't feel like they need to earn or or be self-sufficient, but instead kind of eat the substance of the other citizens around them, not only spiritually, but physically. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the, the times we're coming into. Uh, our government is kind of like these clone bees in, in the way that they eat the substance out of the hive in an artificial way. We're kind of coming to that point. So... I kind of go back to this uh, saying that a lot of people joke about, about, you know, how even an atheist uh, is not an atheist once they're in a foxhole or, you know, they're going off a cliff in a parachute or something like that. Uh, for a split second, you know, their logical mind takes over and they realize that there's a creator of the universe and that they're kind of bucking that idea, always only with the fear of death and our government. That's what they do to us right now. I mean, we're in this constant state where they have the public in a, in a, a clone mentality and also keep giving them these new things to be afraid of, whether it's a pandemic or a new world war or, you know, some amphibian looking thing in a spacecraft that just lands now that they've totally, you know, admitted. They've released their UFO report talking about that these uh, craft are indeed physical objects, nut and bolt, nuts and bolts, and that they don't want to talk about them, but they're not denying them, but they're not going to say that they're extraterrestrial. You know, a lot of people believe these are interdimensional demons. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on of what they could be, but it kind of makes you wonder why the government wants to be the only entity that has contact with this. And when you get into the writings of the elite, you know, they, they don't go for the... Uh, creator of the universe creating everything they more believe in the aliens made us and then somehow the aliens were just created randomly out there in the universe you know even though they're basing most of that on sumerian texts uh, cuneiform texts and even the anunnaki in it whether you believe it's a mythological story or not they believed in an all creator so that's funny even the possible people and i'm going to say people because even they were described as biological flesh beings, believed in an all creator. Um, they didn't believe that they were God themselves. And so we, we kind of wrap around till now where the elite are trying to take the position of an almighty and disconnect everybody from source or God or whatever they believe in. They don't even want them debating these ideas. So they're going to feed an information programming through media, you know, movies or whatever. And if you buck this at all, uh, you might just get an article written about you that uh, defames you. So that was the article from Vice News written about myself. The way the Vice News article was written, they didn't understand the basic science of interglacials to full glaciation to mechanisms of how solar activity goes from a solar maximum to a solar minimum. But on longer time frames, it comes into something called the Grand Solar Minimum, which my channel is all about. They kept talking about the temperature, and the whole reframing of it was, David here at ADAPT2030 is saying that we're going into a full-blown ice age that's going to cool global temperatures. And I kept getting put into this climate denial thing, climate change denier, which for me is a little insulting because I've been standing here for what seven years saying the climate's going to change too fast for humans to pivot to a new crop 
growing species in a certain latitude, it's going to happen too fast where we're going to start to go into food shortages because the climate's going to shift too fast and we're unprepared and we're unable to have conversations about how fast it's going to shift and look into the past and see what has happened to prior civilizations, prior societies when these cooling periods come and the grow seasons shrink to the point where food gets incredibly expensive. It upsets the the entire economic spectrum where almost everybody's earned a dollar is going into food purchase. So everything around on the periphery crumbles. So the hit piece that was out there from Vice News, the Arctic's going to be ice-free projections that have never come to fruition. They need to point the finger back at themselves and look at some of these higher level people who are getting millions and millions and millions of dollars of funding who've made bad call after bad call after bad call. And they're trying to squash the conversation on anything. They want no grand solar minimum conversation at all. They want no discussion on cycles repeating. Government's understanding the cycles are repeating, and we have taken no action for now. At the end of this year, you are going to watch food prices spike to the point it's going to start to upset society. And I was saying the the assets have already been positioned in place because since 9-11, you have to think about how the world's changed, how much surveillance there is now, how militarized police forces are, and everything is ready for this type of civil shattering and disconnect and, and, and just unraveling of all cohesion of society because people can't eat. That's the main theme. If you go back through history and you look at all the, the past, I'm going to say five grand solar minimums, you could even say six. If we go back to the Homeric minimum, let's say circa 400 BC, Homer, same thing. You follow these trends every 400 years and the society resets. And this was the discussion that I'm going at, not a full-blown ice age. The, the news organization had no understanding of even basic, of the most basic, I mean, rudimentary kindergarten level understanding of the solar system and how the sun works. They even had no reference of how large the sun was in comparison to the earth. They didn't understand magnetic fields. They didn't understand how the variance of a solar minimum or a solar maximum affects even the jet stream patterns. If you trade grains, you are following El Nino and following La Nina, which is based on a solar pattern. When we come into low solar activity or high solar activity, the, the Nino changes and the Arctic Oscillation changes. And the North Atlantic oscillation changes. So just the basic grain trader understands all these cycles that are triggered by the sun on the 11-year solar cycle. And they have the audacity to come out and try to paint you into a corner of, he's talking about a full-blown ice age where they didn't even understand interglacials either, which was the saddest part. Like, how do you have somebody working at a news organization like that it doesn't understand the difference between a 100,000-year cycle and a 400-year cycle, writing an article to target to try to destroy a reputation in a slanderous manner. The way that the journalism was done is actually an insult to the profession.